program. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Now. Hello and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Get With The Program Radio Show is a multicultural, informative, relevant, and entertaining one-hour weekly show offering a diverse combination of guest interviews with questions and comments. And we will act as a positive source of information. Today, we will be joined in the studio with Vegas Dawn, who is the Executive Director for Campaign for Change, which is a nonprofit organization committed to improving the image of our communities through efforts to educate, empower, and change the negative mindset of today's youth. Today, our topic is changing the mindsets of our youth from negative to positive. But now that's going to be a very, very good conversation. I'm looking forward to having that with, uh, with, with Vegas. Man, Vegas is, is uh, doing a lot of things in the community, so don't you touch that dial. But before we get to the conversation, I got to reach out to my man, comedian Grave Digger. Grave Digger, what you got for me, brother? What you got for me? Dear, I just got to ask you, do you ever just have somebody in the family that you just don't want to take nowhere because they don't know how to act in that country? We took my brother-in-law out the other night to a Chinese restaurant, right? We all in there ordering French fried rice and chicken fried rice and pork fried rice. He got some chicken fried rice. And after the, all the food was delivered, he called the waitress over and asked her for a slice of light bread. And she looked at us and actually spoke perfect English, like, get this food out of here. Yeah, that's just how family members is. And I know everybody got somebody like that in their family. But I want to get back to one other thing. Look here. Y'all remember back in the day when there were no black quarterbacks on NFL teams? Now, name me one team that doesn't have a black quarterback that's starting or a black quarterback that's backing up. See how things change here? I just had to bring that up tonight. Be careful who you take out to dinner. Choose your people. Don't take them on, on things that's going to embarrass you, like Family Feud or something like that. Gary, I got to get out of here. And I want y'all to keep getting with the program right with my man, Gary. Gary, I'll see y'all later. Peace. Man, Gary Digger, boy, I'm telling you, you always got something funny, man. You're keeping it real and keeping it real with me, boy. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. But I tell you what, man, uh, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this hot musical selection. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Say what? Get with the program. It starts now. Welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Today, we are joined in the studio with Vegas Dawn, who is the Executive Director for Campaign for Change, which is a nonprofit organization committed to improving the image of our communities through the efforts to educate, empower, and change the negative mindset of today's youth. Now, today, our topic is changing the mindsets of our youth from negative to positive. Hello, Vegas Dawn. Welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. What's up, Gary? I appreciate you having me. Absolutely, brother. How's it going so far today, brother? Everything is going great, just extremely busy. Oh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, I've, I've been keeping up with you, man, watching you. You're doing a lot of things in the community right now. And um, you got quite a history. And this, this thing, this campaign thing that you're going on, you're looking out for the communities, taking care of the youth. I'm loving every inch, every inch of that. So let me get right into it. I, I, got, I read your bio. On uh -huh. the website, so I want to briefly read that so my so my listeners will kind of get some of the history behind where you're coming from. Um, you was raised by your grandmother. Now, at times growing up and with your family, you had sometimes, from my understanding, you had nothing to eat, and yet your grandmother still instilled wholesome values into you. Exactly. Uh, as a source of survival, I understand you started snatching pocketbooks and purses, committing <laughs> petty crimes back in the day. Now, yeah. this continued until you was about 16 when you were arrested for purse snatching and taken to jail. Facing 20 years sentence, uh, you ended up uh, with the probation sentence. Uh, but you were still not convinced that you could, out, could not smart the system. You just yeah. wasn't convinced. So you continued to live the life of a criminal and you formed a gang called the North Durham Vice. Yes. 
along with gangs, alcohol, and drugs became a part of your life. Every day. Every day. Now, uh, by the street standards, Vegas led one of the most dangerous gangs in the city of Durham. Uh, by the age of 19, nearly all the police officers in Durham knew your name. And had and you had numerous felony charges from, from drug selling, attempted murder, and you were on trial for shooting at a nightclub. The verdict came back guilty, and before the judge sentenced you, the judge stated this was something that that really touched me. He stated that I see that you have a lot of followers, and because of that fact, I'm going to make an example of you. Um, that moment, the judge sentenced you to 30 years in prison. Yeah, which I thought after I read that was just way out of total character for me now while serving your 30 year sentence um you went on a mission uh to get this time reduced yeah uh, and you knew there was uh uh you knew how this thing was probably going to end up having received assistance from uh another defender uh pleaded your case to the supreme court and was able to get the sentence reduced uh to 10 years and ended up serving five yeah well actually the sentence got overturned so you know i was illegally sentenced Oh wow! Yeah, that's a, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So re release from uh, prison at twenty five. Uh, uh, you vow that you would never go back to prison. So since your release, uh, Vegas completely you to turn your life around. Uh, you own and you now own manage numerous uh, uh, businesses, and and you committed your life to reaching back to help others and find the right path. So, with that being said, we're gonna go right into the conversation. So you've had quite an experience on it. Extremely, yeah. Yes, yes, amazing. So, so, so Vegas, now, being that you were a, a gang leader, tell me about the prison experience, because nobody knows what a prison experience is like until they're there. People always yes. can say things that they know in life, but they really don't know. Yeah, they really don't know. Um, I see a lot of movies depicting um, prison life, and a lot of them fall way short of what really prison life is. Um, I think it's about two that I could say really kind of had the real depiction. It's probably who wrote it, probably went to prison. Because it's kind of like you wouldn't know unless you experienced it. But prison life is, you know, for, for the most people, and I can only speak for the majority because I was, I was kind of exempt from a lot of stuff that went on in prison. Like, you know, people go there and get abandoned totally from their family, and you and you have people just – struggling mentally and physically because they get bullied and it's not even really bullying and in prison it's just mm -hmm. you just getting taken advantage of mm -hmm. you know i was fortunate enough that i was the you know, more of the predator than you know someone who was being victimized so that's the part in, in prison you'd be victimized on all different types of levels from the security guard the from the officer from the nurse i mean it's just it's a bureaucracy is is it's, it's politics is it's, it's racism so it's a lot that goes on in prison is they it's its own world, so mm -hmm. it's a whole nother world. So what we what I'm hearing is that it's pretty much what's out here in this society is actually exists in the prison. On a maximum type. So what exists out here is not as intense as it is in prison. Um, and you'll be have to be able to deal with it physically and mentally. Um, like I said, I see a lot of people um, prison destroy them mentally or physically uh, mm -hmm. and then you know so i was just fortunate enough to be a leader and, and be strong enough to be able to sustain anything that came my way mm -hmm. and, and I, I was able to do that now now uh being that you were a gang leader and, and gangs in the streets out here today versus gangs in the prison because there's gangs in the prisons mm -hmm. as well as in the streets what kind of challenges did you face as being a leader out here, when you got in prison, you had other gangs in there. What kind of challenges did you face when you got in prison as being a, a gang leader outside? Well, I formed a gang in in um, in prison as well. So it's it's just it's the same. It's almost the same. If you are um, notorious in the street, you'll be pretty much notorious in prison because your name travels in prison. Although I've been out now out of prison twenty about twenty three years, mm -hmm. um, my name still holds a lot of influence and weight in prison i have a lot of guys who touch reach out to me and like in prison i'm I'm an icon in prison but now i'm an icon in a positive way instead of a negative way mm -hmm. changing lives which yeah. is a wonderful thing so uh vegas tell me about um campaign for change well it started off pretty much you know how god worked it started off when it wasn't a campaign for change it was just me changing myself i got on my knees and prayed to god while i was incarcerated if he would allow me to ever be able to um, get out of prison again um 
that I would dedicate my life serving him and helping others who was raised up similar to how I was raised. Mm -hmm. Mother owned drugs, dad is nowhere to be found. So I pretty much was raised by drug dealers and gang members and street thugs. So what kids see is pretty much what they'll be. And that's what I became to be a street thug and a gang leader. Um, but, you know, when it comes to campaign for change, once I got out of prison, it was still a long process. It took me seven years to make the total change. Mm -hmm. you, don't, it's, it's, you know, you just can't change overnight. So, you know, you, you get rid of some things, some vices, and then you get rid of some more, and then you clean, clean up your act until you clean up the whole house, the individual, the whole inside. So mm -hmm. um, campaign for change, that's how it came about, um, campaigning to change the mindset of the negative you. Mm -hmm. So um, that pretty much is what kind of started, kind of influenced you to start this organization based yes. on things that you went through. Yes. The whole scenario. Wow. So I tell you what we're going to do, uh, um, Vegas, what we're going to do. We're going to take a listen to uh, one of the testimonies from your website. My story goes, me and my kids, we were staying on Massey Avenue. And one night my son decided to go outside past dark and there was a shooting. We was actually running from bullets. Um, my son got caught up in a crossfire and we had to leave our home and we entered to a hotel room because I was trying to save his life. I was homeless for seven years and stayed in the hotel room when I met Mr. Vegas. It was Christmas Day, I'll never forget. 12 o'clock that day, I was sitting there praying because I had to pay my, my weekly bill and stuff and I didn't have any money to buy my kids anything for Christmas. And um, I was sitting there praying and crying. At 12 o'clock that night, I got a knock on the door, and it was Santa Claus, Campaign for Change. And they came in with all sorts of gifts and things. I mean, right at the last, at the very moment when I'm sitting there praying to God for him to help me and just send something and somebody. And he did. And they sent me Campaign for Change, a blessing to my life. But not only that, he also brought in help that could help me get out of the situation that I was in. And it turned me around. The guy that he bought that night came in and taught me about some things about outreach from the community and things. And they actually helped me get my housing in place. They gave me a second chance. They helped me to receive my second chance because they brought people there that could help me get out of the situation I was in. And that also helped me get in contact with outreach workers, which helped me to have someone to talk to on a daily basis, to have my kids someone to talk to on a daily basis and stuff. And it made me feel like, because at that time, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was at loss. I'm an ex-drug user. And I was, you know, I was just at loss for words. And I started seeing drug counselors. I started getting in groups. I've started going back to school. I've also wanted to be, you know, now the the people that I'm you know, working with that actually think I would be a great peer counselor because I've been through so much. And if it wasn't for Campaign for Change, I wouldn't even seen that inside of me. You know, they actually seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. It changed my life. It really changed my life. My son was in a play with Campaign for Change, Ride With Joe Crack, and he worked hard with it. You know, that's my first time I was seeing my child work as hard at the age of 15 at that time. I mean, he showed me a part of himself as showing being responsible, going and doing like he's supposed to. They actually showed him, you know, by him not having a man figure in his life, how to be responsible about certain situations. And he has grown up with that now, being at the age of 17 and out looking for work. My son Darius really don't have anything to do. By him being a young black male in this community in Durham County, and without a father figure in his life, there's a lot of things that he can learn that I cannot teach as a woman. And for to have positive black males out here doing things like Mr. Vegas says, it's a great idea. It's very much needed. And more people need to come together and help these males because they are our future. But God sent me these people and they helped me. They helped me start a new future for my life. You know, I'm strong now and I have good courage with my kids and everything. And 
everything is going to be all right and I can start, start all over. They gave me my second chance. Wow, that was such a powerful testimony right there, as, as, as it sounds like to me that you're doing a lot of good things in the community. So uh, what is your target market for your youth? Is it a certain age group that you look at or is it a certain criteria? What do you look for? Well, well, basically, you know, I was mainly focused when we first started on gang members and helping them transition out of gangs. As we grew, we've been in, in you know, now been running for 17 years. Um, our focus has got to be the whole family. Because, you know, I really cannot help a young man or a young lady heal and transition without the support of a parent or parental figure. And um, that is very key to success of the individual. Mm -hmm. And and with that being said, because I know that uh, when you're dealing with uh, families, you, you got to know a lot about them. You kind of study them. You kind of pay close attention to them. Because I had an experience. I, I did have a chance to work with some different organizations myself mm -hmm. uh, with un, uh, undeserved uh, uh, youth. But what are what are the negative approaches uh, to look for before a child has gone too far? Because I know you can, you, when you're in the streets and you can see something going on in the community, mm -hmm. what do you look for? And you say, I, I see this kid going in a direction. Yeah. Well, well, well. None of them has went too far, even if they have murdered someone, because, you know, God uh, forgive you for all sins. So, I, I, you know, I thought and you know, I was told that I was the worst of the worst. So if you can take someone like me to make that transition. It's never uh, too far. Um, so we want to deal with the hardcore people that they say can't change because I know it's possible. I'm a living proof of it. So. So it's never too far. So what we like, we you know, we really be excited when we get someone that they say, this kid just can't change. Well, I got tons of stories of kids have changed, went on off to college, uh, been very successful. I, I got a couple of my kids now that open their own individual businesses that really didn't have a fighting chance if they let society mm -hmm. um, pick it out, you know. Right. So, so basically what I'm hearing is that uh, – there's no such thing as giving up. There's, it, it can, things can be fixed. Some yeah, of our, right. some of our youth people have given up on them and just yes. put them to the side. And I, I've heard people say stuff about a lost generation. Yes. I, I hear that all the time. What, what, are, what are they trying to say? Well, basically what they're saying, cause I was a part of an organization that formed about, probably about 13 years ago called the Lost Generation Task Force that was actually formed in Raleigh, but we worked all over the triangle and they was doing some good things. I think it is it technically is a lost generation. So how, if they lost, we must have, we must find them. And we, once we find them, we must make them the transition to back into being productive citizens, being in the right, you know, surroundings to be able to prosper, to be able to uh, have a successful life. Mm -hmm. um, lost to me mean more in the mentality of the youth. Um, a lot of these um, kids are being brainwashed um, by television, um, even radio um, commercials and stations. So I applaud you for just promoting positivity because, you know, we need that in our community. And you are a variable, a very essential part of, in our community, Gary, by just doing this. And that's why I took the time out to be interviewed by you, Thank you. Um, because, you know, a lot of these radio stations have succumbed to what we need to do to make you know, commercial sales. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes not good for the community. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was going to be my next question. My next question was, was going to be, you answered before I could get to it, was what do you think is the problem with our youth being derailed yes. uh, to the negative side of life? Definitely. Um, yeah, I answered the TV. Uh, music is plays an essential part um, in the mindset. I love rap music myself. I come from an um, entertainment background. Um, mm -hmm. Before I started Campaign for Change, I had my own entertainment company, which I ran for seven years and was very successful. And mm -hmm. I've been around some of the most A-list prominent stars. I mean, Queen Latifah, you know, you can um, cash money millionaires. I mean, I have been in the same circles with them. And um, so music plays a, a very important to as well in, in changing the mindset and brainwashing our kids to think that, you know, drug dealing, popping pills, gun slinging, mm -hmm. it's cool, mm -hmm. and it's not. 
Mm-hmm. It's detrimental. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, to my listeners, once again, if you're just joining into the show, today we are joined in the studio with Vegas Dawn, who is the executive director for Campaign for Change, which is a nonprofit organization committed to improving the image of our communities through efforts to educate, empower, and change the negative mindset of today's youth. Today, our topic is changing the mindsets of our youth from negative to positive now vegas now is it really really important for the mother and father to be present in raising a child is or it, or is it just important for them to be raised by someone who isn't their natural biological parent i think the first choice is very important i feel you know just from my experience of working with a lot of kids and being a uh, a, a child has, was raised up by his grandmother that was very positive, very instrumental in my life. However, I long for the nutrient of my mother and, and the guidance of my father. I long for that. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I had resentment, so I turned to the streets and I was angry. So when I shot at people, when I robbed people, it was anger that was built up inside of me, feeling like I was neglecting. And I was mad at God. I was like, God, you know, you supposed to love the children. Why am I living in this type of destitute um, situation in this environment? And mm-hmm. I was angry at God. It took me a long time to heal. Um, and, 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 you know, and this is a powerful statement here. You know, when they when I was 18 years old and they gave me a 30 year sentence in prison, they sent me there as a punishment. But prison actually saved my life because it allowed me to look at the man in the mirror and say, hey, don't worry about your mother and father not being there. You in prison because of the things and the mistakes you have made. Mm-hmm. Own up your responsibilities and make a change. And that's what I did. That's wonderful. Once again, we're in the studio today with Mr. Vegas Dawn. And uh, we're going to continue this conversation. But my listeners, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this important message. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Once again, I'm your host, Gary Jones. And today we're in the studio with Vegas Dawn, who is the executive director for Campaign for Change. And we're talking about our wonderful conversation. It's changing the mindsets of our youth from negative to positive. Now, Vegas, uh, welcome back once again. Now, what types of uh, marginalization uh, is the community experience right now? What What is dividing us? What is changing us in our communities? I think what's changing us is we don't have um, the programs that really used to just come inside the community and give hope. You know, like they used to bring out the little wagon with all the little frisbees and the the hula hoops and things like that. Kids are not involved in activities like that no more. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the basketball goals, you know, I I done lobbied and got a couple of basketball goals redone and put up that was in communities that (laughs) they had tucking out of the community. So you you had to bring the parks, you know, right back in the community and not just have a park built, but have activities and fun days and Pacific people coming in to help neutral and give the the community hope. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's a, that's a big draw, you know, just, just really not putting hope back into the community. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say, because a lot of this has to do with poverty and, and limited education, discrimination, these are the main concerns. Would you say based on experience from, from your lifestyle, going into prison, would you say that this whole system is somewhat by design? System is definitely by design. Um, a system is set up, and I'm be honest with you, for the African Americans to fail. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's got biased laws. It's definitely got discrimination. School has lowered the standards for our kids to, to fail. Um, right now, you know, when they lowered the grade point average of an A, I mean, that doesn't even make sense that you can actually be failing now and make a D. Um, so all those things, when you lower the standards, when you deprive a community of funding, when you deprive a community of the natural resources and resources, you know, you know, they're going to fail. And it's just set up for us to fail. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what uh, and with that being said, what influences now you, you mentioned earlier um, uh, about we, we, we touched something about religion and things of that nature. What influences do the church? I mean, has the church you think the church is doing enough for the communities? Me personally, I feel like the churches are not. However, you know, it's up to us to hold the churches accountable as well. Um, people go every week faithfully and put seed money into the church. 
and you can see the church grow and flourish, but right across the street, the community is diminishing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to hold the churches accountable. Uh, although I don't, I approach over a hundred churches in my span of campaigning for change, and I think I got two churches who really step back and help support our mission. Other coaches just ha or other churches just have their own agenda, their own mission. And it seemed like they only care about the flock and the family that comes to pull the seeds mm -hmm. into the church when they should be about everyone. Now, I, I hear uh, from some other guests that I've had on the show that um, when it comes to communities, we find that the church in some instances can divide a community because you can have a church on one side of the, uh, yes. the town that's all white, and then you got one on the other side that's all black. At some mm -hmm. point, we can't seem to come together. So do you think the church is also... Uh, could be a possible uh, uh, entity that divides our community? I think it, you know, I think that's just a, something going to happen because of different religions, different beliefs. Um, and, you know, some people follow Jesus, some people should follow God, some people follow Jehovah, some people follow Muhammad. So it will almost be impossible, and I can never say impossible, for the churches to combine just because of the way the structure is set up is it's just like, you know, you would never see pretty much a BP and Amoco, you know, because they're, they're um, in pretty much in competition with one another. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're recruiting like the army recruit and the Navy recruit. So you, you would never see the army and the Navy combined forces. So I think that's just going to be reality. Mm -hmm. However, the churches in all aspects of churches, should be pouring more, investing more in the community and the city that they live in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. is it important for our, is it important? Uh, you think is it important for our youth to have religion in their lives, or or is it or that's just a preference? I mean, do you think they is it important for the for the youth to to believe in God and Jesus? I would, I would a, say you know absolutely a hundred and fifty percent because okay. without God, I give Him all the credit while I'm here. And um, one of the things that we do when I approach game bangers or whoever, I know they're not even trying to hear nothing about God. So at first I have to earn their individual trust, their in individual understanding of what I'm trying to help them and do with them. And then I introduce them to God. I introduce them to the church. Last year we took 84 kids on a Sunday in the church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had 84 youth walk in the church. Mm -hmm under my um, leadership. So I felt good about that. And we do that every year. So I don't force church or God on them. I let it come to them like it came to me. You know, like it took me seven years to really say, hey, God did this. Hey, God get all the glory. Hey, God get all the credit. So mm -hmm. firmly 110% um, believe that without God, nothing positive is possible. That's wonderful to say. Now, when, when, a, when a, a child comes to your organization, what is the process and the steps when they come? If they come to you and say, "Yeah, um, uh, I want to be helped," what, how, do, how do you go along? How, what is the first steps and process? So we try to deal with each kid individually because each individual is suffering and, and, and lacking in their own individual um, needs. However, I, I use this terminology. It's kind of like throwing them to the wolves. We don't have a baby step process. We once a kid come a part of campaign of change. It's strictly zero tolerance, high standards, no pants sagging, no cussing, no disrespect, no none of this. We're not dealing with none of this mess. So you're going to straighten up your act today, not tomorrow. Oh, he's just going through or she just going through some troubles. Yes, you are. But you're going to straighten up today. And, 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 of course, it takes some time for them to straighten up. But we don't lower our standards or our requirements Mm -hmm. For any individual. So when it, how, how do you, how do you, when you, when, when you have a, a child that comes in, how do you deal with the parent? Because sometimes parents don't want to let go of their children. <laughs> in my case, I don't, I won't, I won't use the terminology of let go because a lot of the, my kids in the province community, parents don't even have a hold on them. They just, you know, the, these kids are running around like chickens with their head cut off. Mm -hmm. They don't have no type of guidance, no type of structure. And I'm not talking about all kids. I'm just talking about, you know, the majority of the kids that we serve. So we really don't have a problem with parents not letting kids go. We mm -hmm. have a, per a problem with parents not being involved. We have a pro problem with parents not helping us with the right requirements and the procedures and standards because sometimes when the parents are involved, in my case, mm -hmm. 
they're using excuses and they're lowering their standards and they're allowing their kids to be that way. When we are saying that's not going to happen, mm -hmm. this kid must be successful. This kid is great. This kid is a leader. You know, that's the, the quality that we try to instill in kids. Mm -hmm. What kind of um, um, homes do you experience that these children are coming from as far as, I mean, because uh, uh, you got the single parent homes, you got the drug abuse homes. What do you see a lot of? Well, it's what I see is, you know, I don't, I don't really, I haven't really stepped out of the demographics of the impoverished community. So all I do see is, you know, situations like we go in people's houses on Christmas Day and they have two, three blunts of weed in the ashtray, but the kid might not have a Christmas gift. I see things like that. I see um, taking a kid home from practice and his house is boarded up because his mom didn't pay rent. Um, most of my kids are single parent mothers who got a boyfriend that's possibly abusing them or a drug dealer just to try to survive, and they're trying to live off the system. I'm just being honest with you. Mm -hmm, that's what um, I want. And mm -hmm. we just want to teach parents as well. Um, um, we have 16 weeks of parenting, free parenting workshops that goes on during our summer program um, that they can come and learn about financial literacy, home ownership, and things of that nature. But we have very, very, I say in, you know, 150 kids, this is a perfect example, 150 kids we served in the summer last year, we probably had 10 parents that was involved out of 150 kids. That is wow. amazingly sad. That is sad. Yes, that is sad. Uh, what should, a, what should a, a parent, speaking of the parent, what should a parent look for um when their child, before their child is actually taken to the streets? I mean, what are some of the signs that, that we need to look for in our children? Once again, I'm sad to say this, but the majority that I serve, the parents is introducing it to the kid and don't even know it. The the, the families that I serve, the parent is walk, smoking weed with the boyfriend in the living room and a seven-year-old kid is right there watching TV. So you don't want to introduce them to weed mm -hmm. and things of that nature. The cussing, the behavior, the disrespect, the the the, the verbal abuse. Not only just physical abuse, but the verbal abuse. These kids are picking this up really right from their home. And so when they go out, they act from what they see is what they be. They mm -hmm. act out. I know. I was a, I was the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I seen this in the home. I seen my mama get abused. My mama talked to us. You know, in verbal abusive ways. So mm -hmm. as I grew up, I was a, a verbal abuser, very strong. And my words was very, you know, intimidating to people. And, and I was like, why are they acting like that? But I didn't know. And until I had to, you know, educate myself and find out who I was truly, truly was. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm hearing is that a lot of the influences are coming from what the ch what the child hear see it's it's all about vision and hearing. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, how because we talked a little bit about hip hop earlier. Mm -hmm. So so how has hip hop affected our youth, or has hip hop uh, caused any problems? That you think that's you know is that, is that a problem for us? I think I think so because it's just like your body if you eat the wrong foods, your body would be damaged or react a certain way if you eat. If you eat the wrong foods, but if you eat healthy, your body will flourish. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the mind. You're feeding your mind information. You feed your mind music, and whatever music you tend to embrace, it will have an influence on your mental state ability. I can concur to that. I like rap music, and I and I'm right now campaigning for change. But I could turn on a, a rapper, Savage. I love his beats. And I listen to him, but he's saying some awful things. So what you think a kid can't process, especially a young kid can't process, okay, I hear what he's saying, but I don't agree what he's saying, and I'm not going to do that. No, they're going to try to mimic that because that's that's society, you know. Mm -hmm. you know? So so when a child is, when a child is young, um, because I, I think I read somewhere that they now are start looking at a child when they're at the age of three. Mm -hmm. and start looking at them, start already kind of figuring out which way this child is going to go. What do you feel about that? Well, not only looking at three, they, they do all, another assessment that I think is you know, very detrimental to the African-American is they do this certain type of assessment in the first grade where they pipelining kids by third grade to the penitentiary. Um, they're already making bed counts. They decide to make bed counts 
um, and how many prison they build based on a third grade analysis from first to third grade. So, so that's what that prison pipeline you might have heard about. That's what's going on with us in the system. And so that is that would that be another process of something that is programmed, programmed systematically governmental against the African Americans to say, and it's it's against the African Americans. But understand that some other demographics like Mexicans and even some whites, the trailer park whites, would be swept up in that system too. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. is your organization is it for all races? Definitely for all races because all races get involved in gangs. All races get killed by gangs. All races get on drugs. All races lose lives to drugs. Mm-hmm. So that is our two key um, topics that we fight. Uh, you know, however, um, we go where we see the biggest need and the most destitute people are with the lack of resources, which is the impoverished community in what they call the projects in the hood, which Fortunate, unfortunately, <laughs> is probably ninety eight point nine percent black. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, we can't mm-hmm. help that, you know. But we help, you know, all demographics of kids, and we have. Mm-hmm. So, so tell me about an uh, an emotional uh, a success story that has changed the life of one of the youths that you've been that you've been handling. One of the stories that, 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 that you, you touch somebody and it's one of your memorable stories. I like to hear that one. I have so many, but this one particular young lady was put in foster care at the age of 12. And her foster mother came to me and she said, she's in a gang and I need to, you broke my train of thought. You broke my train of thought. We can edit it. Keep going. All right. So let me start it off. Okay, I'm a, not a problem. So, so one of my most, I think, my star pupils is Ja'Kayla Hart, a young lady who was um, brought to us at the age of 12 that was in a foster home, and a foster parent brought her to me and said she's been broken because um, she was sexually abused by her mother's boyfriend, mm-hmm. and she had been sexually abused for quite a few years. So now the young lady was 12 years old, in a gang, out robbing and stealing with gang members in the whole nine yards. Her foster parent brought her to me and said, I want her to join Campaign for Change. And she said she loves to do poetry. And I do a stage play called Riding With Your Crack, and I know she wanted to be on stage. So I told the young lady, if you want to be a part of Campaign for Change, write me two poems about how stupid gangs is. So she was like, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. She didn't know I knew she was in a gang. I said, well, why you can't do that? She was like, I'm just not going to do it. I said, well, goodbye. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Probably a week later, a foster parent brought her back to, to us. She brought me two poems that was how stupid gangs was, and she went with me around the state saying these poems to kids that was in group homes, detention centers, jails. We went all over the state, and she was one of my star pupils. Now, Ja'Kayla Hart has graduated from Emory, and it's in med school. Wow. So I love that story. That's so wonderful. And speaking of that, we're going to take another listen to one of the testimonies uh, uh, from your organization. Take a listen. Uh, I was raised by a single parent. Uh, I grew up watching my mom going through different struggles. And it was, it was frustrating at times because I wanted my dad there. Uh, the DBL truly helped me become a better man and a better leader. And it just showed me how to make better choices as a man and to become a better leader and how to deal with those frustrations about my father not being there. What I mostly like about the DBL personally is just the workshops, is just how it teaches you how to deal with different situations in life and how to handle certain things and how to be your own person and how to be a leader. I tried out for my high school team and did not make it, so I went to the DBL and tried out and I made it and it really built my confidence level and built up my leadership skills. And so the next year when I went back to play high school ball and tried out again, I made the team. And DBL really prepared me for it. Coach Don was a great role model, a great father figure. And it just, it just really helped me. And it also helped me off the court by being able to balance work, uh, school, and working out for basketball, volunteering as well. And now I'm on my way to Campbell University. I'm very excited about going to Campbell University. It shows that hard work pays off on and off the court as far as in the classroom studying, 
and volunteering, uh, all the hard work, it, it pays off the name. I plan to come back and help with the DBL. Um, it, it's 100% a good program for all teenagers, especially coming from single parent homes or who are just lost out there and have no guidance. So I would love to come back and help and be a part of more success stories. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Once again, I'm your host, Gary Jones, and we are in the studio today with Vegas Dawn, who is the Executive Director for Campaign for Change, which is a nonprofit organization committed to improving the image of our communities through the efforts to educate, empower, and change the negative mindset of today's youth. And our conversation is changing the mindset of our youth from negative to positive. Now, uh, Mr. Vegas, uh, we had touched a lot of things before we took the break, but you have a um, a, a play that's coming up um, yes. that I that I I've, I've seen the truck going around the community, and I always said it was Joe Crack. Tell me about Joe Crack. You mean tell me you haven't seen the play, brother? I, brother, I ain't seen the play yet. Brother, I want, you brother. I got. To I, I want to come to see. Yeah, I want to come. I want to come see. The, um, tell right, me about that. Riding with Joe Crack now has been running for fourteen years. Okay. Um, we had we started off in the, uh, in small little uh, community centers, and we was fortunate enough to perform it at the DPAC, which is a that's huge, big huge accomplishment for us. Mm -hmm. And then we do it every year at the Carolina Theater as a part of our give back to the community. It's totally free now. Um, for the last four years, I partnered up with the Durham County and the City of Durham, mm -hmm. who supports our efforts where we can offer it for free. Because what we found out, um, riding with Joe Crack is a anti-gang, anti-drug dealer message, although it has domestic violence in there, racism in there, a whole lot of issues that the society deal with. We tackle those during the production, which we try to say it's a community awareness production. Mm -hmm. um, it's very cool, though, uplifting. Um, so it's some screams, shouts, and cries throughout the audience mm -hmm. um, because we – make it relevant to the audience. We actually use today's music from and old school music and and, and um music that is not just R and B and hip hop, but we use um gospel, we use um pop, we use all types of music to connect with the community. Sure. Well so what else you got going on? I know you got a lot of things going on. You got some yeah. basketball things. What else you have going on right now? Well the DBL is the Don's basketball league. We started um, six years ago, one of the reasons why we started, I was an AAU coach um, six years ago, and I had been for like eight years, and I, I had a team that I wanted to allow to play AAU, top quality basketball, but that could not afford AAU, so they could be on my team for free. And I ended up doing some business with AAU, and it was like a slap in the face. They was telling me about all the millions they was making, and I realized they wasn't giving back to the kids and they wasn't doing nothing really prominent for the kids. So uh, instead of complaining about it and talking junk about it, um, God put on my heart to create the Dice Basketball League, which is a, a league that's totally free for the youth. All mm -hmm. they have to do, though, is nothing free in life, which I tell them. They have to do mandatory community service and take educational classes mm -hmm. every week. And we have a homeless program to go feed it, feed the homeless. We have a coding club. We have a book club. So we got a lot of things going on. So we say it's more than just basketball. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely more than basketball. It's 30% basketball and 70%. Those are the productive things that I just listed. Um, the great thing about the DBL is is very entertaining. It's NBA, so we have the halftime show. We have the live commentators. We have two games that airs on Fox 50, which is over 2.8 million viewerships. Mm. We have our own DBL magazine. We have our own DBL merchandise catalog. So we're we're pushing to make the DBL the best basketball league in the world. That's wonderful. So how can somebody get in contact with you? What is the website, the phone numbers, and things like that? Well, if, a kid, if they have kids, that want to be able to um, play in the DBL next year, we're summer league. They can go on the website dblnba.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's dblnba.com, and it's from ages 12 to 17, girls and boys. It's a co-ed league. Um, if they want more information, how to get free tickets to riding with Joe Crack, this January the 20th, 2018, they can go on our website www.c for c for lifecom That's once again c for c for lifecom Then go on that website, click on that link, and get free tickets to see Riding with Joe Crack, which is a very inspirational production 
that we host every year. That's wonderful. Now, as far as also for the organization that we talked about earlier, Campaign for Life, if if uh, somebody wants you to uh, get involved with their youth, and they need to do the same thing, go to the same website? Yes, they reach out to us um, on either website if they want me to get involved with youth. I do um, workshops. I go in and do trainings, safety trainings, workshops, um, community involvement, uh, um, infiltration. So if you interested in me coming in and doing some work that way, you can also reach me at those websites as well. Okay, great. Once again, in the studio today with Vegas Dawn, yes. my man. So but before we wrap this up, uh, what would you like to tell my, my listeners right now about uh, their children or about anything you want to tell us about uh, what's going on with society and our youth? You know, it's, if I was to express anything, um, people are trying to figure out why and how our youth is going down this destitute path. Um, understand it's a system that set up for us to fail. However, we must break that system. We mm-hmm. must fight that system. Mm-hmm. So I think the lack of parenting is probably my number one. Although they have the system there, I have kids. You could parent and be on top of your kids to keep them out of that system. Mm-hmm. So I think if I could say anything, I encourage all parents, mom and dad, single parents or whoever, to really get involved with your kid and be a part of your kid's life. Not just send them to school, not just show up at a basketball game, but really get involved. Go out on dates. Um, go go to activities together. Do mm-hmm. things together. I mean, just not the normal things, though. Mm-hmm. Something that your kids would feel like that you wouldn't even want to do. That's Step wonderful. out of your comfort zone. That's wonderful. Once again, thank you so much, Vegas Dawn, for coming in the studio today. Once again, uh, you listen to Get With The Program Radio Show. We're about to wrap this up. As I always say, stay positive. Keep your head to the sky. And uh, listen next week. And make sure you stay tuned to us. And uh, hey, man, uh, keep your head up. Watch out for your use. And as always, remember, stay on top of the game. But always do what? Get With The Program. What you talking about? The Program. The Program. Get With The Program. It starts now. Now. Now.